What we're going to look at today is the circulatory system. And obviously, there's a couple of main things that we're really going to focus on. We're going to focus on the heart and the structure of the heart. And then we're going to focus on the pathways around your body. So arteries, veins, and capillaries. All right, so the first thing, when we are looking at a heart, your heart is about the size of your fist, and it actually sits to the left in your chest cavity. So your left lung is actually slightly smaller than your right lung because your heart sits in behind it. So obviously there needs to be room. There isn't spaces in your body. There's no gaps, okay? Everything's tucked in really neatly together. So about the size of your fist to the left, and so your left lung is a little bit smaller. In a couple of weeks, we are going to dissect a pluck as a class. And a pluck is basically where you have the tongue, the trachea, the lungs, usually the kidneys or the liver, um, all attached and the heart. And you can see how all these things join together. But you'll see the left lung is clearly a different size to the right lung, okay? Now with your heart, there's a couple of major things that we want you to know. You definitely need to know the difference between atriums and ventricles. I'm assuming you've done some of this in HPE, okay? So what you really need to remember though, is if you're asked to label a heart or when you're talking about the heart, when you say left and right, it is as if it is in your chest. So it's sort of counterintuitive, but when you label this, when you label the right side of the heart, it's on the left side of your piece of paper. It's as if this is in your chest. So when I'm labeling it, I've got my right side and my left side. Now the way I always remember my atriums and ventricles is A comes before V. So the top two chambers are atriums, the bottom two are ventricles, right and left for both. And it's really important because we talk about the two sides of the heart, and I'll get to that a little bit more in a minute. But you definitely need to know that the top two chambers, right atrium, okay, left atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle. We'll come back to talking about arteries and veins a little bit later. So there is there, the four chambers of the heart. Within reason, you should be able to spell those words as well. So if they are new to you, you should be able to spell those. That's not the sort of thing we would give you in, in your exam. In your exam, we might give you word lists for things like endoplasmic reticulum from cells. So words that are totally new to you, uh, but we're not going to give you these. Now with the circulatory system, after I'm finished talking, there's an activity for you to do here where you're going to basically, after reviewing the images, the video and the information, um, why is the heart referred to as a double pump system? It's a really important question. The heart is considered a double pump system. Now before I get into that, the first thing I want to cover is do you have blue blood? No, you do not. Why do they use red and blue in diagrams of the circulatory system? Why? Because red represents oxygen in your blood and blue has that oxygen. No, so perfect. What's the blue though? It's not no oxygen, it's carrying carbon dioxide. Now, could there be times when blood might look redder? Yes. If it's oxygenated, it can actually look more red, but we just use the red and blue in diagrams to represent those two things. So that's how the light goes through your skin. So the actual, that's the light traveling through your skin and how you see the color. Yeah. Um, now, when we look at this, really important. So you might like to take some notes when I talk about this. This is one of the things you really need to know. Your heart is considered a double pump system because in one trip around your body, it goes through your heart twice. The really important thing for you to also make note of is your left and right sides do not meet inside your heart. The left atrium and left ventricle join, the right atrium and right ventricle join, all four of them are directly connected to each other. So in a journey around your body, it goes through your heart twice, your blood. So why it's a double pump 
is it's really important that it involves my lungs. So your respiratory system and your circulatory, you very rarely get taught one without the other. They go together, okay? Now, with your heart, you breathe in, you get lots of oxygen into your lungs, and then that oxygenated blood that's traveling around your lungs comes down and it goes into your, is that my left or my right? Remember, it's as if it's in your chest, as if it's in your chest. So my left atrium, it then goes down to my left ventricle and then it gets pumped around my body. And to go out of the heart, it actually goes out of your heart through an artery. I don't need you to be able to specifically name all the arteries and veins. I've heard people say before aorta, that's very good. And your major vein is like your superior vena cava. I don't need you to name them like that. I just need you to know arteries take blood away, veins bring it back. So it's come from my lungs, it's nice and oxygenated. It's come down, it's gone into my left atrium, down to my left ventricle. Can you please circle or highlight this thicker wall here? Your left ventricle has a thicker wall than your right ventricle for a very important reason. When your left ventricle pumps your blood, it's got to pump it so it travels all the way around your body. It's going to go down to your feet and back up through your body, dropping off oxygen, picking up carbon dioxide. Side note, remember we talked about the fact, what's the one cell in your body without a nucleus? Which blood cell? Red blood cell. Red blood cell because it needs space for carrying oxygen and carbon dioxide. So it's now gone, thick muscular wall of my left ventricle, pump the blood, it's going around my body. Going around my body. Dropping off oxygen, picking up carbon dioxide. It now comes back up my body. Harder to do because it's going against gravity, isn't it? Okay, it's got to come back up and it goes into my right atrium, down to my right ventricle, and then it goes to my lungs. So in one trip around your body, it's got lungs, atrium, ventricle, around the body, atrium, ventricle, back to my lungs. Really important, that's why it's a double pump. In one journey, it's gone through my heart twice. Left ventricle, more muscular, because it's pumping it to my body. Why doesn't my right ventricle need to be as muscular? Well, where's it, where's it, take, where's it going to? It's only going to the lungs, which are just next door. Okay, so this needs to be more muscular because it's pumping it around my whole body, but here only needs to get it up to my lung, so it doesn't need to be as muscular. You'll be able to see that really clearly when you dissect on Friday. The other thing you'll really clearly be able to see, and I'll come back to this again a little bit later, is when you feel the major arteries, arteries have thicker walls than veins. The arteries have much thicker walls. You'll actually be able to clearly see it as well. Why do you think an artery has to be thicker than a vein? Why do you think? Remembering that arteries are away, veins are back. Hang on, top, Tyson White. This is getting pushed from the feet, like the heart is pumping and pushing. Ah, very good. So higher pressure. Yeah. So it's pumping and it's going really hard. And your heart doesn't stop. So it's going to be under high pressure all the time. So your arteries actually have to have thicker walls. Think of a hose. You don't want the hose to be able to get kinked easily. You want it to have a nice and thick wall. So arteries have to have a thicker wall because they're under high pressure all the time compared to veins. So double pump, 
So I've just hit a few things, I'll come back to them again, but the, the major takeaways from that, double pump system, it goes through my heart twice, left ventricle, thicker wall, because it's got to pump through my body, arteries are thicker than veins because of the amount of pressure they are under. Alright, so there's a bit more of a simplified diagram there. What we might do, let's take a minute for you guys to do your heart diagrams while this is fresh in your mind. So these are the two things I want you to do to this now. Imagine this is in your chest when you label it, right and left. So I want you to label the atriums and ventricles and the other thing I want you to do is arrows showing the direction the blood goes. You could add lungs and body if you wanted to, but having a look, so for the arrows, this diagram is a really easy one to look at. So from the body, atrium, ventricle to lungs, from the body, I'm oh, sorry, from the lungs, atrium, ventricle to body. So on your diagram here, I want to see arrows and I want to see the chambers named. Okay, so arrows and chambers named. Lungs, body, and we're going to go. It goes from my lung into my atrium, then it goes down to my ventricle, then it goes around the body, and then it goes from my body into my atrium, down to my ventricle, and then up to my lungs. So it looks a bit messy, but the idea of it is for you to get that it goes lungs to left atrium to left ventricle, then around the body, right atrium, right, right ventricle to my lungs. Just put that aside for a minute, we'll have plenty of time to come back and finish these things off. Like I just said, it's drawn on your one note, so what I just drew is on there. It hasn't gone anywhere, it's on yours. Alright, so double circulation, the oxygen rich blood. Oxygen poor blood travels from the body to the right side. Okay, from the body to the right side. The right side pumps it to the lungs. The oxygen rich blood goes back um, to the left side of the heart. Okay, double circulation, single trip around your body through your heart twice. There's a couple of videos here for you to watch. I'm not going to play them for you now. You can watch them after um, we've done the labeling activity. Okay. Um, there's a good little PowerPoint here too with some extra information if you would like to go through it. But this is the other part that I really wanted to show you and just talk to you about a little bit more. So with your, basically you've got what's called blood vessels. So blood vessels is how your blood gets around your body. Now you've got three major ones that we talk about. We talk about arteries, veins and capillaries. Capillaries are really small, usually only one red blood cell in size. So one red blood cell can travel through it widthwise. So really, really tiny. You have lots of capillaries in your body. It's a really quick way to get a lot of blood through. Um, like as a side thing, there's certain animals that have adaptations, right? Sometimes when we're really hot, our face will go red. And a lot of what our face going red is, is it's opening up all the blood vessels near the surface and it's trying to cool you down. It's trying to cool your blood down. Some big animals that do that, so you've got African elephants and Indian elephants. And the major difference between the two is African elephants have much larger ears. Why they have larger ears is their ears are full of capillaries and they have lots of blood flowing through them and as they move them around, what's it doing to their blood? It's, cir it's circulating, but it's cooling it down. All right, it's cooling down their blood. So that's why they need the bigger ears. So talking about our body though, your arteries and your veins, you can see it from the top here. Arteries have much thicker walls, much thicker walls because they're under higher pressure because it's where the heart's just pumped and it's flowing to the rest of your body. Your veins still have pretty thick walls. 
Your capillaries, much smaller, getting blood all around your body. So off the major arteries and veins, you have lots of capillaries throughout your body, getting blood to your organs. So there's a good little video here on blood vessels that you can watch, and then a couple more questions, and then some textbook questions here for you.